Hello, everyone. How are you? My name is Ashley Sinclair. I'm an ambassador, and I have the honor and privilege of um, introducing you guys. Some of you have met her and heard her speak at conference before, but um, introduce you guys to my amazing ambassador. She's actually one of the very first distributors that signed up with me. I tried to talk her out of signing up because I didn't know what I was doing and she was a 22 year old and I knew she was broke because I was the one that paid her paycheck. <laughs> so I was like, don't do it. I don't know what this business is. It might all be crazy. Don't do it. She went behind my back, signed up anyway. And then when ambassador joined the millionaires club and she's incredible. I learned so much from her every day. So you guys are in for a treat to get to hear from um, one of my favorite people, Miss Alyssa Bowman. So um, Alyssa, let's jump in. Very first tip, we're talking about follow-up. Cami asked us to share about um, follow-up. And the very first thing, when Alyssa and I were chatting a little bit earlier, the very first thing that we both kind of said was, the main tip is to do it. As silly as that sounds, do it. You have to follow up, you guys. Um, you're not bugging people. I feel like the main reason people don't follow up, it's not laziness. It's that number one, they don't know what to say, um, which we're going to help you with. Or number two, they feel like they're bugging people. And hopefully we will help you get over that as well. So um, Alyssa, did you have uh, did you have issues with this whenever you first started kind of feeling like you're bugging people or how to follow up? Like, what did you struggle with at the beginning with follow up? I don't know if anyone else watching is a little bit shy or maybe would consider themselves to be an introvert, but I, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, oh, not. Um, we actually have very opposite personalities, but a lot in common too. So you guys will get to hear from both of us, which is yeah. kind of fun. Um, so I was always nervous to reach out. I had the same fear that I was going to bug people, that I didn't want to pester them, that if they wanted the products, that they would just message me. And I finally realized a couple of things. The first thing is that this business was a priority for me when I started. I wanted the extra money. I was working hard to try to figure it out and to ask questions and go through the training and I, um, the, the business is not a priority for other people. Like it is not a priority for someone to send you their credit card info. They are not just like dying to try whatever product it is. Like they might be interested and they might be really wanting to try it, but it's not a priority for them. It's not at the back of their mind all day. Like this business is for most of us. So give people a little bit of grace, know that they're busy. They've got real lives. They probably have full-time jobs. They probably have families. It's not that they lost interest. People are truly business, busy and they're not on their phones all the time like a lot of us are. So just keep that in mind when you're following up with people. And I don't know if we have a lot of online shoppers on here. I pretty much only shop online. And there are certain websites where if you go shop and you add things to your cart and you don't check out, you'll get an email later that day that says, hey, you forgot something. Am I ever super annoyed when I get that email like, oh, I can't believe they're bugging me? No, <laughs> I clearly went to their website, wanted something they had, and for whatever reason decided not to purchase. It might have been my, my credit card was in my car. It might have been, you know, I just wasn't sure if I really wanted it right now. Whatever the reason was, I didn't check out. But that doesn't mean I wasn't interested in. So us following up and sending that message is just a way to check in with them because they're busy and they probably more than likely forgot or they didn't have the money and that can be a really humbling thing to tell someone like, hey, I don't have the $39 for keto coffee. So instead of responding, they'll kind of just ghost you for a second until they get paid. So that's the other thing you have to keep in mind when you're following up is that, you know, the, the, the reality is a lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck. So follow up yeah. is key to get those orders in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I wrote this down because in Jersey, um, I did a training up in Jersey and or maybe it was Philadelphia. I can't remember where I was. All those little bitty baby, we're from Texas. So all those little bitty baby states, they all run together for me. Um, I was somewhere up North and Nina said, or I said something like fortune is in the follow-up because it is, and you should write that down in big letters. Fortune is in the follow-up. But Nina, whenever she came up and spoke, she goes, yes, fortune is in the follow-up, but fortune is in the immediate follow-up. And that's kind of been a new concept for me because sometimes I'll look up and it's been a week since I've followed up with someone again, even eight years later, like not wanting to bug them. Um, and so I may wait five, six, seven days 
and then look and then look up and that's when they start ghosting me and realizing that wait a minute that immediate follow up if someone if you gave someone your website and they did not and, and you did not see the order come through there is nothing wrong the next morning or the next day or the next evening saying hey girl i um i sent over my website did you get a chance to look at it just that extra point of contact to be able to say, you know, for them, oh my gosh, I got so busy and I forgot to look at it. You guys, I can't tell you, like Alyssa said, how many times I've been interested in a product and then I literally just get busy. In my mind, I'm like, oh, I asked about that product and a lot of times I check it off, not thinking, oh wait, I've still got to give them my money or I forgot my Venmo password or my credit cards out in the car, in my purse or whatever it might be. And so you've got to remember that that immediate follow-up is important too. So I used to say like a two by two by two. So I would follow up two days later. If I didn't hear from them, I might follow up like a week and a half, two weeks later. And then I'm, and then if I, they were still ghosting me maybe two months later and I've changed that. I've really gotten a little bit more, I almost hate to use the word aggressive, but a little bit more aggressive with my follow-up since kind of hearing that quote, because it rings over and over in my mind that the fortune is in the immediate follow-up. Like you have a hot lead. Why would I wait for them to cool down and then go, what, what are you talking about again? Co coffee? Oh, oh yeah, no, it's okay. It's not a priority for them. Maybe six days later. So try to remember that that fortune is in the immediate follow-up too. So really, really, um, messaging them quickly. Let's see. Oh, and that oh, and we, we uh, want to share wording with you guys. My really simple one that I've been sending is just, hey girl, I know life gets really busy. Did you get a chance to look over the website? And then if they say, oh my gosh, I didn't get a chance to, or oh, I did just, hey, if you've got, if you've got time, I'm right here at my computer. Just what's your shipping address? I'll start your order. Like they're just slowly kind of working them into that sale. Um, but my follow-up is not lengthy. It's not crazy. I know Alyssa's isn't either. Um, it's very, very simple, just conversational. Um, and that is the third tip that we have. And I feel like Alyssa is the guru at this, which is why I asked her to be on this Zoom with me. Um, and our third tip is be yourself. Be conversational when you're speaking to people. So Alyssa, share a little bit about that because I know you're kind of, well, I'll proclaim you as the master of this, but you may not proclaim yourself as it. I will. Oh, hey, well, thanks. Um, like she said, try to be conversational, share a little bit of your life. I always kind of apologize, even if maybe they were the one that left me hanging. I always say, I'm so sorry for just now checking back with you. You know, it's been crazy with the baby or whatever, just to kind of remind them like, hey, I'm a normal human being. I'm not some robo robot that you're talking to on, you know, social media through text message. If you can voice message, that's amazing too. Let them hear your voice and how excited you are about, you know, the product, share even maybe something that it's done for you, but really short and sweet. Like get to the point with your follow-up, but also be genuine. So we have some scripts for you today, but my advice is to look at the script and tweak it so that it fits you. Because especially if you're talking to friends and family, they're gonna know immediately if you're not being yourself. So you know, put a little bit of your own personal touch to it. And um, I think, um, do you want me to go ahead and share some of mine or read them or? Yep, go ahead and screen share. And then you guys, um, Alyssa's gonna screen share, so hopefully you can take a screenshot of this. Um, and then I'm gonna put it in the chat as well. Look at you, you guys, she's like the most. Okay, hold on, let me start at the top. So these are all product ones. They're all very simple. You guys probably don't even need scripts for these, but I always, at this time of year, always like to point out that I'm putting in orders for people that are getting ready for the summer to kind of remind them like, hey, it's February. <laughs> and so, you know, that beach vacation you have this summer, I just like to kind of throw that out there so that they're thinking about it. Um, so there's a couple of different ones. There's an apology one. An apology one. Let's mm -hmm. go with hey. the apology one. I'm sorry for not checking back with you sooner. I'm just placing a few orders for people now. Did you have questions about the info I sent you? Um, and then assuming the sale, like the first one up here, would it be better for me to call or text you to help you snag the discount? Okay, so just assuming that they're ready to order. One of the things that I love to do with Facebook Messenger is set reminders in our chat. So if someone says like, I can't right now, I need to wait for payday, I immediately ask, okay, great, when's payday? I don't wanna bug you, I'll just set a reminder so that we can check back then. So I'll set a fun reminder, I'll title it like weight loss goals or you know, fat burning coffee or whatever. So that way when that day comes, they get an alert from Facebook, I get an alert from Facebook, so neither of us forget that that was the day that we, um, wait, the thing that we decided on. 
And then that last one, you know, if you have personal results or you have results from a client, or even if you have a corporate approved before and after from Pinterest, following up with a before and after picture, like, Hey, I know you've been interested in X, Y, Z. These results just came in. Aren't they amazing? I wanted to share with you. And then one of the questions I like to ask is weight loss, something you're still working on for this year, or is skincare still something that's your focus for 2020? Because I like to ask questions that are a yes. I'm not asking them like, hey, do you want to give me your, your money right now? But is weight loss still something you're working on? Because more than likely, they didn't change their mind overnight. They still want to lose weight. That's so good. That's so good. Hey, a couple of you guys have asked me. Um, okay, Alyssa, can you minimize? Yes. A couple of you guys have asked me. I, I copied and pasted. Oh. Yes, there it is. Exit full screen. Okay, I copied and pasted. I was trying to keep my Facebook closed so it didn't do that dinging thing but let me, I will pull it up. And the, the, the message was too long that I sent. So I have to do a little at a time here. So give me two shakes of a lamb's tail and I will get that in the, um, I will get that in the chat. Alyssa, you're also really good about, um, oh, I know what tip I was going to throw in here really quick. You know, we do this a lot. We do a lot of voice messaging. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I love voice messaging through Facebook. If you need to practice for yourself, if you didn't know this, you can go to your own messenger. So I will type in Ashley Wood Sinclair and I will message myself. Um, hey girl, I just wanted to you know, follow up with you. It's Friday. This is when I always do my follow up. Um, and I was just thinking about you and wondering if you wanted me to place your order. I'm including a couple of other friends orders today. Um, if you want to just message me your shipping address, I can get the order started for you. What do you think? So I'll go ahead and send that. I'll get it the way I want. And then you can copy that or you can forward it to the person that you want to forward it to. And so in my messenger, I'll have little things that say thermo follow-up, coffee follow-up, right? And I'm just, and in my follow-up message, I'm just saying, hey girl, I'm placing orders for the coffee today. Um, you know, did you want me to include yours? I'm so excited for you to try it. I got to try it at conference. Um, it really helped suppress my appetite. It was, so I made one like that and now I'm sending that. I can just copy and paste it to people. So again, it's working smarter, not harder. Um, is that the right saying? Yes. It's harder, not smart. You can work either way you want. <laughs> work however you want. It. Just work, right? Um, okay. I've got this pulled up. Let me send this over here. Uh, Alyssa, Alyssa, and I will put this in these few in here. Okay, Alyssa, why don't you start while I'm copying and pasting this? Why don't you start with um, um, how you follow up with distributors? Just some different different wording there. Okay, so one of the things I'm doing right now for potential distributors is using the new sample program as a way to follow up with them to help them pre-sell coffee samples in order to pay for their kit. So whether or not you have $69 promo codes, this might vary just a little bit, but it's been a really fun and our team's having a lot of luck with um, their potential selling coffee samples. So my script looks something like this, very short and sweet. I don't go into all the details of how everything will work. I just wanna get their attention. So I'll um, share this in the chat, but hey girl, was thinking about you this morning and how much this business and extra income would help you. I know last time we talked, money was too tight to get started. If I could show you a quick way to get a starter kit for just $9 today, would you be interested? Okay, so my whole thing behind that is helping them message friends and family, selling them three sample packs for $20, collecting that money, putting $60 in their pocket. I still have promo codes. I don't know about you guys. Um, obviously, they can sell more sample packs if they need to come up with 100, but that's been my tactic. So as soon as they say yes, then I've been voice messaging them just saying, I'm really excited. We just announced something brand new. You know, I have a couple of promo codes, so that drops it down to $69, but I'm going to send you a message and we're going to send five to 10 of your closest friends and family this message and try to find some people that want to try this coffee. And in addition to that, I'm sending them a Facebook post or Instagram post for them to make. So that way they can get a little bit of interest, hopefully from both sides and it's also a great way to rule people out, if I'm being honest, because if they're not willing to message five to 10 of their friends about coffee samples, they're probably not gonna work their business. <laughs> so it's been a really good um, sign on whether or not someone really wants to do this business. So it's been, it's been a 
really fun. So I am, uh, did you put that message already in there? I did. I just put that. Sorry guys. I hadn't quite figured out to all panelists and attendees. So my bad. I got it. It should be in the chat. And then I know she put that up there and just something really quick. And so right after a conference and granted, I had followed up with these people a couple of times, like, Hey, can I answer any more questions? I'm really excited to help you make money. That's one of my main follow-up lines for DT is always, I'm excited to help you make money because that's why they reached out, you know? Um, and so the one that I just sent recently was, um, was, oh, sorry, that was a second one. Hey, Grace, quick question. It's Ashley with It Works, and I just got back from our amazing conference, a new skinny tea and coffee and a discounted starter kit. Would you still like info or should I take you off of my follow-up list as someone who wants to make money from home? So you cannot believe the amount of people that said, I don't have the money, but please don't take me off your list. And I loved that. It, and, and then the ones, and then there were some that said, take me off your list. You guys, I had like 400 text messages. Okay. So I know Alyssa had a bunch too. I really needed to sift through who's serious, who's not. Um, and you know, who was just messaging and wanting to know what kind of work from home opportunity is it? And when they found out it was a business, they weren't interested. There were a lot like that, which is fine. I want to work with those ones that really are ready. So to hear that was great. You know, if, if this isn't a good friend or someone that you've really gotten to know through social media, if it's on your Instagram or like, um, that don't really know us from Adam, I want them to see I'm an actual real person. I'm not just some robot. And so I loved that start to it. That was like, Hey, Grace, quick question. And, um, anyway, I'll put that in the chat too here in just a second. I'll figure out how to do that. Um, so anyway, that's been something that has helped as well. And again, that goes back to just being conversational and, um, and not being afraid to follow up again. That was like the third or fourth time. The other thing that I did, and I actually signed a girl on Tuesday because of this, I reached out right after conference and sent the whole, let me pull this message up and yes, I will send it to you guys. Give me just a second. Um, okay. So I sent her a similar one on Monday night. Now this girl's been saying she's going to sign up and she reached out to me. This is not like some random person I reached out to. Okay. Hi, Aaron. How are you? Wanted to let you know, I just came back from conference and told her about the six codes, told her about the bonus. I definitely, and I followed up with her four times without her responding. I definitely don't want to keep following up if you aren't interested anymore, but I'd love to help you get started if you still want to make some money. Well, she goes to me, she saw it little bubble face read, then didn't respond. So 24 hours later, and this is someone I went to college with. So there's a little bit of history here, but I said, okay, girl, I can take a hint with the emoji like this and like this. Um, I won't keep bugging you. I was just excited to help you get started after you reached out. There's so many awesome things happening. Sorry if I bugged you or annoyed you in any way. That was my last line. And I know Alyssa has like, I learned this from Cami, I think on a panel, probably like seven years ago, it is gold because the minute you're talking to somebody that, um, that you have any kind of a rapport with or a relationship with, and you say, I'm so sorry if I bugged you or annoyed you in any way, you guys, she, she had four messages left on red that she did not respond to immediately. And I, you know, you can see the name at active now, like I knew she was on Facebook. No, I'm interested. Life has been super crazy. What's the buy-in now? How much is it? I told her, okay, send me the link. I'll do it at lunch. Guess who signed up a DT? I mean, it was, sometimes it's just getting, again, it goes back to that being a little bit more aggressive. A-G-G-R-E-S-S-I-V-E. -S -S -E. Aggressive, a little bit. And just kind of putting yourself out there just a little bit more. I take what I do very seriously. I know Alyssa does. I know you guys do. And so we have to just speak from the heart. Like if you don't want to do this, then don't do it because you guys list and list and pages and pages of potential distributors that are ghosting you is not really a hot list. I would rather have six people that I am so excited to sign up because they are interactive with me. They really want this. They want to do this. Then I would have 88 pages of dead potential DT list. That's going to lead us into our next thing. But I want to say this one thing, some of you and hear me, please. Some of you, after you send out this next message about going to conferences and how you're so excited, okay? Some of you need to break up with your potential list. Now, if Cammie's listening, which she's probably not because I'm using her code, but if she's listening, she may go, Ashley, wait a minute, what are you about to say? But hear me out, okay? My team knows that about once a year, we have to have this little come to Jesus meeting about our potential list. Sometimes you have to break up with your potential list. You have to take it 
and you got to file it in the drawer because if these people weren't going to sign up for $10 kits for $20 kits, if they weren't going to sign up, if you were practically giving away uh, $500 to them, you guys, they're not your potentials anymore. And it's time to move them to another list, which we're about to talk about because some of you just hear me out. If you would break up with this list, then guess what? You would be hungry enough to go find another list of potentials. And some of you have been working the same list for so flipping long that, and you're so emotionally attached to it that it makes you feel like you're doing the right thing. It makes you feel like you're busy. It makes you feel like you're going to be diamond in 30 days when the truth is these are dead DTs. These, these are, these are dead PDTs. They are not ready to sign up yet. And so I tell you all that not to say give up on them, but we want to give you another idea. Okay. And another way to reach out with them or reach out to them because I have a potential DT list. I know Alyssa does this too. And then I have a hot list. I have like a fire list of people that they're hot. They're responding back to me. Like they really do want it. They reached out to me. This wasn't just somebody I was like, you should think about doing this. And then I had to message them five times. This was them being a hot lead. Does that make any sense? So some of y'all need to let go emotionally of your dead DT list, move it to a different pile. I keep saying dead DT. I mean, dead potential DT list, move it to another, uh, file. And then Alyssa taught me this, uh, Kali, this was probably like three years ago. This was after I think 10 or $20 kits were announced and we had all these potentials. And then there was people that weren't even signing up for $10. We had to kind of go, okay, if you're not signing up for $10, you really don't want this business, right? If you're not signing up for 20, if you're not signing up for 69, do you really even want this business? So Alyssa has this great idea. I'll stop talking, but Alyssa share that. And you guys, I will share her wording in the, um, in the chat. Go ahead. So this is for the people that, like she said, they've been on the fence for a while now. Like I'm not talking like two, three follow-ups because there are a lot of amazing people that join this business that need a few follow-ups. Okay. Even a couple months, but I'm talking that list that is driving you nuts that you just need to get people off because right now they're not doing you any good. <laughs> they're not in the computer as a customer and they're not in the computer as a distributor. And they're honestly, at some point you have to decide it's wasting your time. So my whole tactic is I always lead with the opportunity and if people decide they're not interested in the opportunity or they, for whatever reason, they're not joining, then I transition them over to being a customer. And so Ashley sharing my script in the comments, but it's basically just, Hey, I still think you'd be amazing at this and I want to work with you, but I was wondering if maybe you just want to start as a product tester or a product model or as a loyal customer, I can give you a huge discount. And then maybe that way, once you've tried the products, you'll feel more comfortable jumping in when the time is right. right. Okay. Because we know that some people are skeptical because they haven't tried the products. We know we have a million success stories of people that hadn't tried the products before they joined like me, but some people just will not budge. So right. let them try the products, get them hooked on some things that they love. They already are thinking about the business in the back of their mind. Most of those people are going to end up joining once they try the products. That's so good. Okay. You guys, that's so good. I know. And some of y'all are saying, oh my gosh, that's so good. I never thought of that. I hadn't either. I was like five years into the business. And then Alyssa's like, look at, look at what I'm doing. And I was like, that's amazing. And I have gotten so many loyals from this, from my, you know, list from my not hot on fire potential DT list. Now, please hear me and do not walk away from the zoom going, Ashley said, we need to break up with our list and never message those people again. That is not what I said. What I said was, some of you are allowing a really long list of people that have not responded to you five, six, seven messages in a row. And you've got a hundred people on that list. So you think you have a hundred potentials, but you don't, you've really got to constantly be filling that funnel list up. And I know for me that whenever I take kind of that dead list, that's just moved from fire to cold and I put it away and I pull out a blank piece of paper and I go, okay, who is really interested right now? And I only see five, six names on that list, guess what? It gets me working and it gets me on fire. That's all I meant. And that's what I want for you is to have that list of 50, 60 people that are fire potentials, not just your ones that are cold. So you guys, I hope that helps. Um, I did have a, a couple of you private message me. A couple of you put it in the chat. 
Schmaperl has still not signed up. Thank you for asking. That is another uh, lesson in just patience. And do I still continue to follow up? Yes, I followed up with her after conference again and just said, hey, me again, here's your, here's your checkup one more time. I feel like every couple of months I do this and I would absolutely love to, you know, love to help you out if you're still interested. If not, let me know, I'll take you off my list. I've said that 800 times. She never responds, but she'll still comment on my stuff. Like yesterday, the video or the picture of the girls doing their snowman, like she liked it. I don't, she's watching. I don't know what it's going to take. She's been through 10, $20. I mean, she's been through every kind of kit imaginable. I don't think it's the money at this point. So we'll, we'll keep going. But, um, some of you asked about that. So thank you guys for your, for your attention and for um, just your passion for this business. We love it so much and we hope we were able to help in some way.